TFL EV is brought to you by Flow Charger, maker of reliable, high-quality charging stations for your electric vehicle. Hey everybody, welcome to a super fun video today because we are exploring the ins and outs of the brand new Hummer EV SUV. So we spent a lot of time in the truck, but today we're gonna take this thing on road, let you know what it's like off road. We're gonna talk to the engineering lead behind this vehicle to find out some of the really interesting and hidden details behind this Hummer EV SUV. And Alex and I are going on a road trip from here in Napa down to San Francisco. This is gonna be a really cool video, explore what it's like on the road, see what it's like in Watts to Freedom mode, and also explore the outside and the inside. So let's hit it and get going. All right, so I'm joined today by Alex, who's our new director of social media. Hi. <laughs> and uh, we're about to go do some adventuring in Northern California. And first and foremost, Alex, what are your first impressions on this Hummer EV SUV? Impressive. Yeah. Really impressive. I like it a lot. It's it's really cool. <laughs> Pretty wild. The one we chose is this white model here with the extreme off-road package. So we got the big chunky tires, uh, which we're probably not gonna need, driving through Napa Valley. <laughs> Oh my god. My so we're god. on this narrow bridge and we got this guy in this GMC 2500 and we are hugging the right side in this Hummer. Wow. This is a full width vehicle by the way. I mean we're talking HD width on this. You need marker lights and the full shebang. And uh, yes. This is not a ton of fun here. No. So we're making our way here through the Napa Valley Mountains and we've got this pretty tight, twisty little road. So let's talk about the handling on this vehicle. So it's got four wheel independent suspension with air suspension. Now we don't know the weight on the Hummer EV SUV quite yet. We know that the truck is over 9,000 pounds. They haven't released the numbers yet on this vehicle, but it's probably gonna be substantially lighter because it's a shorter wheelbase, nine inches shorter, and it has four less modules on the battery so they went from 205 kilowatt hours to 170 but uh, this feels like a pretty big vehicle Alex wouldn't you say yeah it's very wide yeah um, now this of course is not intended to be a high performance handling machine especially on these off-road tires and especially in the rain it is just dumping rain today but we get to try out the three windshield wipers <laughs> which is really cool but it's gonna cost a little bit more of course to replace those blades um, but I have to say for the size of the vehicle, it handles really well, especially on the tight twisties with that four wheel steering, which right now is steering inverted to the front wheel. So when um, you know the front wheels turn left, the rear wheels turn right, you can make a shockingly tight circle, like 35.9 inches of uh, feet, excuse me, is the turning circle on this, which is like Chevy Bolt level. Hey everybody, I've got a great opportunity because I am sitting here with some of the big cheeses at GMC and the man responsible, or one of the men responsible for the Hummer EV SUV. Aaron, can you introduce yourself? Yes, absolutely. My name is Aaron Fow, I'm the lead development engineer. So one of many uh, awesome men and women on the team that have been able to bring this vehicle to life. Awesome. And we are sitting here in this first edition um, Hummer EV SUV about to tackle this incredibly muddy course. Did you guys plan to make it this muddy? We definitely did not. We, we ordered <laughs> up some rain, but not this much. Not this much. <laughs> well, whenever you're ready, sir, we can we can start moving. Pick up what you're very familiar with, very capable off-road um, and on-road, uh, where we separate from the pickup is, of course, we have some internal storage, right? Dry storage, mm -hmm. uh, nearly 82 cubic feet. But really, uh, from an off-road standpoint, we have that departure angle. Um, shorter uh, wheelbase as well, so our breakover angle, all of those are improved, giving us some pretty ridiculous uh, off-road dimensions. Now, in terms of the technology on this vehicle, do we still have the crab mode and the four-wheel steering of the pickup? We do, and in fact, I'm in it right now. Yep. Uh, we are in the uh, half pipe for uh, crab walk. Yep. You can really feel and see uh, how the vehicle is moving sideways at the same time. Again, just kind of a a fun uh, uh, and engaging way here to experience this, but of course where it's really beneficial is um, when you're sliding around, bouncing around off-road and find yourself in maybe a precarious position. We, we give you the ability to steer the rear re relative to the front uh, independently. We take you for a ride on my big green tractor. Make it go slow, make it go faster. 
So one question that we receive a lot um, on our channel is, it's a cool party trick, but talk me through some of the real world applications that um, you as an engineer have found it useful. Yeah, personally, um, uh, a few off-road were, think about like a, a steep um, side slope, okay. especially a slick one. So the vehicle's naturally gonna wanna slide downhill and with a traditional vehicle, uh, let's say we're sloped right now to the right. Um, with a traditional vehicle right now, if I wanted to come out of that, I'd steer to the left uphill. <clears throat> my left, my front will go uphill. My rear is going to start to slide and rotate down. Um, where we've actually uh, saved ourselves a number of times is going into crab walk. We point all four tires uphill. Okay. Right, and yeah. then you can just ride up that as you're hmm. traversing forward. So that's one. Um, personally, in a Chicago parking garage with <laughs> insanely small uh, arrows, uh, sorry, aisles yeah. and uh, parking spots. I was able to use Crab Walk to get into one of those. Um, let's talk a little bit about the extreme off-road package, with the, which uh, is an option on this vehicle. What does that give you? Yeah, um, first of all, uh, skid plates front to rear. So you've got uh, approach skid, you've got uh, skids for both front and rear drive units, and of course, battery. Um, so front bumper to rear axle, completely protected and flat. Um, and of course, you know, and we will, um, you can bounce the vehicle off those things and you're, you're perfectly fine. Um, it gives you, uh, the 18 inch, um, uh, tire, right? Uh, 18 inch wheel with a 35 inch off-road tire. Um, it gives you, uh, underbody cameras, mm -hmm. uh, as well. You know, ball spline, heavy duty, uh, half shafts as oh, well that are telescoping. Uh, but there's a big fear online about, you know, ending up in what I assume you would call a thermal event, but what a lot of us would be afraid of as a fire. Talk me through those skid plates. Have those been tested to like the full weight of the vehicle? And then some, okay. yeah. Yep, and, and not just a static load, it's a dynamic load. So think about, um, you know, bouncing off of small rocks like what we have here. Um, so yeah, we, we definitely have designed those to withstand the, the weight of the vehicle. Um, and again, it's a, it's a hit. It's not a scrape. Okay. Interesting. Yep. yep. Very interesting. All right. Whenever you're ready, what are we doing here? So we've got some really large rocks that are actually, it's hard to, uh, grasp how large these are cause they're standing water and, yeah. and standing mud. Um, so it's extra fun. Um, they're really slick, uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna bounce through them a little bit. Very cool. So as we bounce through them, um, <laughs> let's talk about that suspension a little bit. So we've got four corner air suspension. Um, what's kind of the, the variable in the height up and down from like the axis mode all the way to the extract? Yeah, so 13 inches of travel. And we actually take advantage of most of that uh, from the console switch here. Um, you can adjust up uh, nearly six inches. Wow. Which will give you <clears throat> almost 16 inches of ground clearance and then uh, you can adjust down over three and a half inches um, in Watts to Freedom so over nine and a half inches complete. It's a, it's a pretty big range. Yeah. <laughs> um, another thing that you have to deal with in a Hummer EV that you wouldn't for example on the bolt development team is up to 32 inches of water fording. Correct. Um, what are some of the challenges there in keeping water where it's not supposed to be keeping water out where it's not supposed to be I should say. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, first and foremost, when we design the vehicle up front with these requirements in mind, it, um, it makes it easier from an engineering standpoint. So we, um, <clears throat> excuse me, of course, um, have everything sealed below that water line. Um, and it is also amplified, if you will, with extract mode, right? So you're raising that vehicle higher. Um, the, the water line's essentially a foot over our heel point here wow, so interesting. I'm sorry an inch over our heel point here so um, it's it's pretty extreme but yeah all the um, electrical connections below there are completely sealed um, so yeah we're good to go it's pretty cool Alex and I have made it to um, this college, Napa Valley College, and if you look over here, Alex, you can see they're lining these Hummers up for the demonstration of WTF mode or Watts to Freedom mode. That is the max acceleration mode where you can go zero to 60 in three and a half seconds. So we're gonna jump in with the engineer and see how that works. 
All right, guys, so we're back with Aaron. Now we're on some uh, dry pavement, um, and we're about to demonstrate the Watts to Freedom mode. And uh, what's going on when we engage Watts to Freedom mode? Yeah, so uh, when you enter the mode, uh, we're gonna first ask you, are you sure you wanna enter this mode? So you're gonna acknowledge that as a secondary press on the steering wheel. We're gonna, at that point, start lowering the vehicle uh, over three and a half inches. Um, we're at the same time going to start optimizing uh, temperatures of the battery, the drive units, all the power electronics because we're uh, actually unlocking more power than what you would otherwise be able to get. Um, at the same time, we have uh, what we call splash screen, um, so kind of some cool graphics and audio through both the center stack and the cluster. Right. We're going to pump some bass through the speakers uh, inside as well as uh, pulse the haptic seat so you're going to feel it underneath you in the seat and it's all just part of an experience to kind of build up the anticipation and the excitement. Is there a performance advantage to going with the street tires? Actually, no. The, the zero to sixties in this mode are uh, virtually the same. Oh, interesting. Yep. Okay, well, whenever yep. you're ready, we can show it works. All right, so I'll double press the traction button. And over here, continue. So now the vehicle is lowering, as I mentioned. That's a pretty big drop, three and a half inches. Yeah. Yeah, 90 millimeters, it's at, uh, just over three and a half. Um, you can feel the front end was just finishing it there. Now we have the driver coach, which is telling me uh, to brake harder. So I'm gonna push my left foot all the way to the floor. Sweet, all right, whenever you're ready. All right, here we go. I'm gonna give it some Excel pedal. So we're now playing with one of the coolest features in the Hummer EV, and that of course is Super Cruise, not exclusive to this vehicle, but one of um, the most revolutionary pieces of technology in the GM lineup. So what I'm doing right now is cruising down this major interstate, hands off the wheel completely, feed off the pedals completely, and the vehicle is doing the driving. Now I still have to be engaged, still have to pay attention, this is still a level 2 system, I, res I am responsible for anything that the vehicle does, but I can even do stuff like this, so we've got Super Cruise lane change settings. I can uh, signal to the right and it will automatically do a lane change all by itself. So check that out. We're now centered in the middle of the lane and it's complete. It can also have it do automatic lane changes so it'll look for um, you know, openings in the traffic and if the cruise control is set higher than we're going, so right now it's um, set higher than we're uh, moving, it can actually do that as well. So Ford has a system too, it's called Blue Cruise. The Super Cruise system is much more impressive. Now it doesn't work on every road, it has to be a pre-mapped roadway, but there's over 400,000 miles of pre-mapped roadway, so they're adding more and more and more, and uh, this is one of the big selling features on the Hummer EV. So we've been doing a ton of driving in this new electric Hummer. We checked out the uh, Watts to Freedom mode, we checked out some of the off-roading as well, and I thought it'd be cool to kind of check out some of the cool features, some of the cool gadgets and gizmos. So let's dive right into it. So the Hummer EV has a front trunk, and you just push this button right here, and it should just pop open. Yeah, look at that, Alex. Now, what would you use this space for? If this was your Hummer EV, what would you stick in there? That's a good question. I've actually been thinking about this. Well, first, it's designed to stick the top panels in here. So if you want to like make it the convertible version of the Hummer EV, you can stick your top panels in the front trunk. But I guess this would be good for like groceries. I'm not really sure, honestly. Groceries. Yeah. I think that's a good use. Yeah. Another use, like if you're carrying a lot of folks, you got a lot of luggage, you could certainly put a couple carry-ons in here, I think. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And then to close it, on the key actually, you got a couple little buttons here. So you have a, a, a button for your front and your rear trunk, but on the front trunk, you actually have to double click it, push and hold, and then that'll glide close like that. That's pretty cool, huh? All right, Alex, so we're gonna try to take the top panels off. I've never actually done this on the Hummer truck or the Hummer SUV. And I think we have four of them. So we have one, two, and then two in the rear as well. If you had this, would you take these panels off ever? I think I would. Yeah? Yeah, especially on like a summer day. I'm kind of curious to see how they come off. Me too. And what they look like. So latch there, that's pretty clear. Latch here, 
And then um, I'm not seeing any on the center bar. So, oh, does that just come off? Is that that simple? I don't know. That's... Oh, look at that. Mm. Is it heavy? It, you want to try? Yeah, sure. Here, I'll take the camera from you. Don't drop it. No. It's not, it's not too heavy. Oh, no, okay. I was expecting it to be a lot heavier. It's not bad, right? Yeah. Okay, you want to take that? So that top panel's off. Now we could put this in the uh, front. I'm just going to stick this in the back for just now. Look at that, Alex. Freedom! Woo! <laughs> All right, moving back to the back trunk. So there's actually a button that you just push right here. <laughs> the back trunk. The back trunk. <laughs> Guess the normal trunk. And door opens automatically. Going into the trunk, it's very high, especially if someone that's kind of a shorter stature like me. You really gotta, you know, if I'm pulling out a bag. Oh, yeah. Oops, or I'm lifting up a bag, you really gotta like, kind of put your weight into it and lift it. It's really big. I'm actually still surprised that they didn't put a third row in. Yeah, don't you think that's kind of surprising? Uh, yeah, especially because you have a front trunk. So, you know, you think you could put a third row in. Yeah, I mean, I think that would be awesome, especially considering that we're looking at a vehicle that's like full-size SUV. Yeah. Um, you know, not far off the wheelbase of like a Tahoe. And um, yeah, that, that's pretty interesting. The other thing too is the door does swing extremely wide. So, uh, you know, if you're in a parking spot, you got to be mindful of how far that door is going to swing. And then another nice feature about this vehicle, here, I'll show you, we'll close it up here, push the little button by the taillight, is uh, it's got a full-size spare tire. So unlike the truck where you have to option it, stick it in the bed, here on the SUV, it's in the back. But can I show you my favorite feature? Of course. Can I take the camera? Yeah, the rear it. window goes down. Should we give it a try? Yeah, definitely. All right, let's see how it works. If I could remember how to do this, there's a little button over here, Alex. Nice. Look at that. Now here's the thing about rear windows. So um, in a vehicle like a 4Runner, right, where you can lower the rear window, you got to be pretty careful about ventilation because what can happen is exhaust gases can get sucked into the back and then you end up in a bad situation. So in that vehicle, it's best to like put down all the windows. This thing, fully electric. <laughs> so you can have the rear window down. No worry about, you know, fumes coming in. It's pretty cool. Alex is gonna take us through some of the cool interior bits and bobs. What do you think of the overall interior, Alex? All right, so totally obsessed with the bronze copper detailing that you have like on the seats, on the vents over here. This, everything's trimmed in this bronze copper. I really like it against the white. I think it's very modern looking, very sleek. How are the shiny. seats? Are they seats comfortable? are very comfortable. I really like the seats. There's, they go up, down, they have a lumbar support. They're heated and ventilated, and yeah. It's good, right? Yeah, comfortable ride. It's really good. Now, one thing worth noting is like <laughs> everything in here is square. So if you want like curves or yeah. circles, apart from the steering wheel, you don't have a lot of circles. <laughs> you wanna put your foot on the brake and we'll- uh, Start it up. Start it up, yeah, let's take a look at the screens. So 14 inch, over a 14 inch main screen, 12 inch cluster screen here. And then we've got all these like uh, toggles along the middle. Do you like the toggles? I like the toggles. I really like the sound the toggles make when you like click something on. I don't know if we can get it, but it has a really fast, not fascinating, like uh, satisfying. satisfying, thank you, sound. <laughs> yeah, I like them too, actually. I think they're, they're pretty nice. And then everything is a toggle. So like all the climate controls. One thing I don't like is the toggle on the heated seats. It's kind of a multiple step situation here. Right. That's just a terrible complaint, but you know, um, just a small thing. And then your trailer brake controller down here. We don't know how much this tows, by the way. They haven't told us. And then the uh, the wireless charger. This is a great place for a wireless charger because it's vertical, it's upright. You can still access your phone if you really need to. Um, you can see we have the wireless CarPlay all hooked up here. Oh my goodness, I'm getting texts left and right. <laughs> Only time anyone has ever texted me. Um, and yeah, I think it's a nice interior. Now, it's not like a traditional leather though, right? It's kind of like a, almost like a, a neoprene material on the bolsters. Yeah, pleathery feeling almost. Do you like the rubber floors? I love the rubber floors, easy to clean. The inner mat snaps out. Yeah, I know. So if you just get mud, like obviously we've been in mud, so it's just snap it out, wash it, snap it back in. It's a good idea, right? I think even underneath the, like the mats, you have more rubber. Oh, nice. So, you know, I kind of like think that in a lot of ways, the, this vehicle doesn't compete with um, your typical off-roaders, it's more like a G-Wagon Escalade competitor. Yeah. 
and an Escalade doesn't have rubber floors. But do you think this feels like a luxury vehicle to you or is this more of an off-roader? Oh, definitely luxury. Yeah? Yeah, it's comfortable. Everything's so high tech and it's, it's cool looking, it's fancy. All right, let's check out the back seat in the Hummer EV SUV. Now, everything from here forward is the same as the truck version, basically. So the back seat should be pretty similar. And indeed it is. Now it's not quite the same room as like a full size pickup, but it is still roomy. So even with the seat almost all the way back, pretty good leg room, very good headroom. We also have climate controls in the back here. You got heated seats, a couple of vents, got a little power outlet down there. Yeah, it's quite good. And now it's like, if you want the ultimate in comfort, definitely like a Sierra by GMC or Silverado by GMC will have more room, but this is much better than um, a lot of SUVs on the market. Pricing on the Hummer EV SUV starts in right around $80,000, but the first edition is gonna be between like 105 and 110. So what do you think, Alex? Is it worth the money? Listen, if I had the money, I would 100% buy one of these. I really fell in love with this SUV the couple days we've had it. I really, really like it. It's a really cool vehicle. I love the inside. I love the way it looks. I like that it's a big, beefy SUV, but I will not be buying one. Because it's too expensive? <laughs> it's way too expensive, <laughs> yeah. Now, I agree, you know, this vehicle, in my opinion, like we talked about earlier, is more in line with like an Escalade kind of G-Wagon in terms of its competitive set than like a Wrangler or a Bronco, just based on the pricing. And I also think, Folks in Los Angeles are gonna like this thing. Oh, you know, totally. it's a status symbol. It totally is a status symbol. But it's all an all electric status symbol, and it is very impressive in terms of its engineering. So, big thumbs up from both of us. I think if you can afford it. Yeah, if you can afford it, totally get one. And let us know what you guys think. A big, a, a big thank you. Excuse me for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. So Alex, let's talk a little bit about charging this Hummer. Now, it does have one of the beefiest onboard chargers I have ever heard of, a 19.2 kilowatt, 100 amp onboard charger. That's, I think that's more amperage than my entire house can deliver. Yeah. That's a lot of electricity, but yeah, range, they're saying over 300 miles. Now, this car does have, this car, it's gonna be like, that's not a car, it's a truck, but this, this beast does have the extreme offer package. It's predicting, right around 280 miles of range. Is that enough range, do you think, for your daily life? For daily life, I think so. What about like road trips? I see, what if, you know, what if you have to drive across the country? Yeah, but how often are you driving across country? You hate driving across country. I do hate driving across the country. <laughs> <laughs> I will never do that again, but, but say you have, like this is your only vehicle, right? and you have to drive across the country, or you live in a rural place. Well, if you do have to drive across the country, it does have 300 kilowatts of peak charging speed. Um, you can gain like 100 miles of range, I don't know, in 10, yeah. 12 minutes. But let's be honest, I think most folks that are gonna buy the Hummer EV probably have multiple vehicles. Yeah, you're probably right. And you know they probably I mean? have a house. <laughs> you probably have a house, so you can charge it up at home on level two. Um, you probably, can you know take a different car to go across country this is yeah. definitely a premium vehicle that's probably not going to be a household only vehicle yeah you're right but um yeah 280 miles of range like you're saying for daily driving perfectly fine um i like this thing a lot it's cool it's just fun it is know? fun it's very it's a very unique vehicle and it's just fun to drive now comparisons to the truck which we own it feels lighter they don't, they haven't told us the weight difference, but it does feel lighter, feels more nimble. I like the look of this more. Which one do you like the look of more? I like the look of this one more too. Yeah, why yeah. is that? What, what makes you like this more? I really like the bronze detailing, and I think something about it feels more complete. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. I like the, the way that the um, rear end is sculpted. I think it looks really good with the vertical tail lights. It all seems a little bit more cohesive, a little less like, muscle man macho yeah you know yep. what i mean it's definitely like i would be very confident driving this around yeah so I, I like the look a lot um i also just like you know that you have the full truck it feels like the for what this package is offering especially with the full size spare and the shorter wheelbase and the that kind of thing it feels like the suv is a slightly more attractive package than the truck i agree yeah for sure but um yeah it's good now a couple things worth noting right it doesn't feel well, I think you probably think it feels pretty quick, don't you? Yeah. Compared to your Tacoma, is this quick? Oh, so much faster. <laughs> um, it is It is a quick machine. It doesn't feel Tesla quick unless you're in WTF mode. Um, 
So that's something worth noting if you want to go blow your doors off everybody. You've got to be in the WTF mode, which you do by clicking a couple of traction control commands there. Um, but uh, it, it still is a plenty quick vehicle. You still get plenty of nose lift and dive when you accelerate and decelerate. But overall, I think it's a fun vehicle. What do you say we, we close it up, Alex? Yeah, I think so too. I really like it. It's been, it's been fun being able to drive around in this thing. What do you think of your first press trip? Did you enjoy it? Oh, I had so much fun. Thank you for having me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for GM for having us. Um, the uh, We couldn't really do much off-roading because it got so much rain here. They, they didn't want us driving, which is a little bit of a shame, but we'll get it out of Colorado and do that. Yeah, definitely. All right. Nice.